Hello, in today's exercise, I'm going through exercise 1.24 from the Art of Electronics. For this exercise, we need to design a two-stage bandpass filter using RC components. From the question, we need to set the first stage as a high-pass filter, and then the second stage will obviously follow as a low-pass filter. To get a better understanding of main points in this video, I think it's best you check out the last video as well where I go through exercise 1.23 where we calculate the input and output impedances for RC filters as that is very relevant in this question. So what is a bandpass filter? This type of filter is defined as a device that allows frequencies within a specific range and rejects or attenuates any frequencies outside of that range. So obviously you can see that it is made up of a low pass filter and a high pass filter combined. By cascading the connections of a high pass filter and a low pass filter, the signals of a specific frequency range can be attenuated or allowed to pass. So if it was attenuated in a specific band, you would call that a band stop filter. And obviously in this case, we're designing a band pass filter. A band pass filter typically has um, two cutoff frequencies. So you can see that on the graph now. So for the question, we need to design the high pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 100 Hertz. And we need to design a low pass filter, which is this section here, with a cutoff frequency of 10 kilohertz. Obviously from the question, we've been given some details about the filter configuration. First of all, the source impedance that is going into our bandpass filter is 100 ohms. So that is shown with this resistor here and our voltage source. And then we need to follow that up with a high pass filter. So this is the configuration for a high pass filter where you have the capacitor in series and the resistor in parallel with the load. The load in this case being the low pass filter. So for the high pass filter, we need to set the cutoff frequency to 100 Hertz. So then moving on to the low pass filter, we have our resistor in series with the load and our capacitor in parallel. And then obviously, finally, we would be connecting the output of this filter to some device. I've represented that with the resistor R4. The first thing to do when designing this filter, I think, is to set out the resistances as these are the key components for the input and output impedance. If you want more detail on this, please check out my video on exercise 1.23. So we have a source signal source impedance of 100 ohms. So that means that our high pass filter must have a input impedance of at least 10 times what's driving it. So if you're driven by 100 ohms, then we need 100 times 10 input impedance for this filter. That means that the high pass filter impedance is going to be 1 kilo ohms. Now that we know the high pass filter impedance is 1 kilo ohms, obviously this circuit is going to be driving the low pass filter. So the same rule applies and we can set the resistance value for the low pass filter to be equal to 10 times 1 kilo ohms. So we get a resistance value of 10 kilo ohms. And finally, the load is driven by the low pass filter. So again, applying the same rules, the minimum input impedance that the band stop filter will be able to drive is 100 kilo ohms before we start to attenuate the signals too much. So obviously from this circuit, you can see that we have decided all the resistance values and all that's left to design is the capacitors. So let's see how we can do that. Firstly, we will be doing the high pass filter section. So for the high pass filter, we can use the formula that's on the screen now. So the cutoff frequency is equal to one divided by two pi RC. Obviously we know the cutoff frequency is 100 Hertz and we know the value of the resistance is one kilo ohm. So if we rearrange the equation to get capacitance or by itself, which is basically this equation here. And then we plug in our numbers. So we get C is equal to one over two pi times 100 Hertz times one kilo ohm. We get a capacitance value of 1.95 microfarads. So for the high pass filter, 
the capacitor will be equal to 1.59 microfarads. Now the same formula can be used for the low pass filter as well and we are basically doing the same thing. So obviously the cutoff frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi RC. We've rearranged that to get C by itself as we know the resistance value and we know the cutoff frequency value. The cutoff frequency value in this case is 10 kilohertz. So we get the following equation when we plug the numbers in. So C is equal to 1 over 2 pi times 10 kilohertz times 10,000 ohms, which is the resistance value that we decided earlier. And we get a capacitance value of 1.59 nanofarads. So plugging all these component values into our filter design, the final thing to do for the bandpass filter is to calculate the minimum load impedance that we can drive with this filter. And going by the rule of thumb of having at least 10 times what our source impedance is, Basically, this tells us that the load the minimum value for a load impedance before too much disturbance or too much distortion is 100 kilo ohms. Now we can plug in all these numbers into our circuit that I showed you before, and we get the following design for the filter. So you can see we have our source here with the 100 ohm resistance. We have our high pass filter with a 1.59 microfarad capacitor and a 1 kilo ohm resistor in parallel with the driving circuit or the load circuit then we have our low pass filter with the 10 kilo ohm series resistor and 1.59 nanofarad capacitor and finally we have the minimum load impedance which is 100 kilo ohms in this case so this is the design for the filter that we need to design for this exercise now let's have a look at what this filter does in simulation so what you can see here is I've designed the filter as we saw on the PowerPoint. So we ha again, we have our 100 ohm resistor, all the components from the design. So 1.59 microfarad, 1.59 nanofarad capacitor. And I've labeled this circuit here as high source impedance. We'll get to this circuit in a few minutes. So let's simulate this with a AC simulation, which you can do with this option here. So I'm starting from 0.1 hertz and going up to 20 kilohertz in the frequency range. So you can see now we've got two plots coming out from this uh, simulation. The solid line is basically our gain and the dotted line is the phase shift. We're going to ignore the phase shift for this analysis and I'm just going to show you some of the values or characteristics of the gain plot. So obviously we designed our low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 100 hertz. So we should expect a 3 dB or approximately 3 dB attenuation around the 100 dB mark. And if I scroll somewhere close to 100 hertz, which you can see on this, on this readout here, you can see that the attenuation is approximately uh, 3, 3 dBs. Obviously there are going to be some errors in here as well because we are loading the circuit. We can see that any frequencies below 100 Hz there is a large amount of attenuation and if I zoom into this so we've got 600 Hz here and we've got 0.1 Hz here you can see that the DC signals are attenuated by approximately 63 dBs and obviously that climbs closer to 3 dBs as we get closer to our cutoff frequency. So that is the high pass filter segment of our filter. Now let's look at the low pass filter segment which starts off at 10 kHz. So moving my cursor to 10 kHz, we can see the attenuation in this case is closer to 4 dBs and this is because of loading effects probably. But we can influence that slightly by the second circuit that I'm going to show you. So you can see any frequencies between 100 hertz and 10 kilohertz is relatively unattenuated. Obviously you can see that the attenuation on this filter is not great above 10 kilohertz. So you may want to follow this up with a secondary LC filter or another RC filter to achieve better attenuation. Now let's look at the second circuit. What I've done over here is reduce the source impedance to 1 ohm and on this we'll be able to see that the values that 
we get from this simulation are a little bit closer to what we were calculating in the theoretical values. So zooming in to the low pass filter section. So point of this demonstration over here is you get closer to ideal characteristics with with lower source impedance or higher load impedances. So if we were able to increase this to 10 kilo ohms and 100 kilo ohms, obviously we would get attenuation that was closer to ideal. However, your load capabilities would be restricted further. So if you are if your load impedance is less than 100 kilo ohms, then you can play around with these values and get better performance from the filter. That's all I have for today. Thank you for watching.